Yo, what's going on everybody? Um, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the puzzles in the new Dolores chapter for Visage. Um, I recently streamed it for probably about three days. It took me about three parts, probably about five, five and a half hours, maybe six and a half hours total to actually complete it. Um, but one of the biggest problems I had was that I never saw any uh, guides or walkthroughs or anything like that. So I got the idea. Someone was also mentioning it in my comments as well that I should make a walkthrough of the puzzle since we finally got it completed. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's people already getting it put out there and playthroughs, but I want to have a detailed version if I can. Um, so yeah, we're going to get started on the Dolores chapter for Visage. The mirror keys the, is what will set off the chapter. It's always going to be in the same place right here. Um, if you're playing this as the first chapter compared to the Lucy chapter, then when you're going towards the living room, the basement, and right below the stairs uh, around the corner, this is where the mirror key is going to be. So I didn't know it was going to take this long. I figured he'd just, I'd just pick it up already. But yep, so you find the mirror key, and then that's what's going to go ahead and start this whole uh, chapter. Dolores' chapter, A Twisted Dream. Uh, let's get it going. So getting it going here. Um, when you come up that main hallway, when you first start, there's going to be a door that was not unlockable from Lucy's chapter. Uh, you're going to use the mirror key to get in there and actually undo this mirror right here. This is going to start a chain of events because a lot of this is going to be based around puzzles through mirrors. Um, so once you activate that first one, you're going to actually go back out into the living room area to the right here. Uh, there's going to be the second mirror that you need to interact with. Uh, it's going to go ahead and just disappear. And once you activate this one, it's actually going to appear the final one um, for this part will be upstairs. Right there. So getting up here uh, for the final mirror, when we interact with it, it's actually going to show us a room that we need to get to. This room is the attic. So we're going to need to get a hook to actually get up to the attic. Um, as you see, somebody's walking up there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, to get this piece, you're actually going to have to follow um, the person that's walking. I didn't do that. Make sure you do get the other keys, the basement key. Uh, there's also going to be the garage key that you're going to need as well, as well as the electric key. Um, there's some other keys, but make sure you have those keys. Those do really help you. Um, if you have the basement key, make sure you go through this area right here. The reason we're going through this area is so that when we go through, we could turn right. If you've already played the Lucy chapter, you know Visage, you should know where the laundry room is. Uh, the laundry room in the dryer is actually going to hold the garage key. And we're going to need that. It's very important that you're able to get into the garage later. Um, I did this playthrough as with Dolores being the first chapter, so I had not done the Lucy chapter. I feel like that's very basic. Um, it's a very basic playthrough. It allows you to see everything just like just starting out because that's kind of what happened to me i got the game not realizing the dolores chapter came out so when i got into the game unfortunately this that's the chapter i started with too um, make sure you do definitely get this chair as well so that that door is not jammed um, you want to be able to get anywhere you need to as quickly as possible uh, dolores does like to chase you in this game All right, taking it from here, one thing you need to do to activate getting the attic piece is follow where the person was walking, which will lead you into this first room to the right after the stairs. I interact with that just to make sure that it triggers the event. Uh, coming down the stairs, you see the man. He actually leads you to the attic piece, which is in the progress room. So just follow him through the hallways. He'll just keep disappearing. He won't do anything. He just leads you there. Um, but it is important that for some reason you need to follow the footsteps to that room to trigger this at least that was what i noticed through my two different gameplays um i had to do it that way otherwise it wouldn't trigger this and i couldn't get the attic hook in the progress room without doing it that way so just as a tip make sure to do that um and then he'll lead you to the progress room where you can get the uh hook for the attic so that we can get in there 
Yep, at this point, just interact with it. It'll pull it out, and then you can make your way back to the attic to pull it down and get up to the rocking chair room. So we make our way back to the attic up the stairs uh, where the person, probably Dolores, was walking. Um, you'll use the hook from your inventory to get up there. This room is going to be important uh, for two things. One, setting things in motion for the main room where you're going to be bringing a lot of the puzzle pieces back for the crib. And um, also for one of the first puzzles that I tackle, you need uh, the tea boxes up here right there. That's the tea box. You're actually going to get the key from the first puzzle that I do I actually have an order of the puzzles that I go through I feel like it fits best if you're wanting to like get through it quickly I'm sure somebody will come up with one that's better um, but yeah that will drop from the ceiling you can drop down and as you see the room has changed now right off the bat this room already has a puzzle if you want to leave that is where we're gonna need to get the five toys to put on there uh, once basically once you have the five toys it's gonna uh, finish the game also note to take those two pictures off where you see them in my video um, you can actually peep through them to see the ant the solution to a picture puzzle we're gonna do in one of the mirrors as well what I did was I just took a picture so you could do the same thing make sure to grab this slipper um, and you're gonna actually put it on the bed this is actually how you get out of the room um, this is the puzzle to get out you're gonna line it up with the other slipper on the bed and then the, the mirror should break behind you you'll typically people will just turn around I already knew what was coming so you just turn around turn back around you'll see that the clothes are gone I just did it because I noticed that the clothes weren't going away so I think it's inciting you to do that um, that's also one of the first cassette tapes that you can take and you could play through it so if you do play through it I do I advise that you should you know like look at the story and everything um, yeah and then that'll do a cutscene um, just go through the cutscene once you get out and you'll appear upstairs like I was uh, you're gonna follow this blood trail um, I did look at the garage first so just to point this out there's two important things that you're gonna need from down there so just again make sure that you do have the garage key which is in the dryer uh, but you're gonna go ahead and follow this blood trail and this blood trail is gonna take you to the progress room actually uh, where you're gonna drop down into a hole um, so I mean some of this is pretty self-explanatory um, but a lot of the puzzles I noticed didn't have any real clear direction on as to where to go. And I think that was one of the problems that I had uh, playing this game. That's just what I noticed personally. All right. So once you get to the end of the hall, you're going to turn right, crouch, and go through a little hallway. And you're going to reach these mirrors. All you have to do is just take some laps around the mirrors. Every once in a while, you're going to see a mirror with Dolores in it. Just stop at that mirror, watch her action, um, whichever one she does. I think there's only three, three actions that she does. So there's one where she's standing, one where she walks side by side, one where she's hanging, and then, oh, one where she's standing. So there's four. By the fourth one, um, a mirror will break, at which point you just go down the hole. So again, just take the laps and do those. And then again, the, the fourth one, you, I think you just approach the fourth one. And then when you're close, it'll break, open up that hole. And then you'll drop down to Dolores again, where she'll ask for you to bring her child. Now, going down here. Um, this is very important and I wanted to highlight this moment. So the garage is going to open or it's going to be open. Sorry. And the car is going to be going off. Make sure you turn the alarm off. You don't want that going on your whole gameplay. A lot of players do miss this. You need the sledgehammer that's broken through the window. So after you turn the alarm off, I accidentally get out. You'll see in a sec. Um, you'll want to turn to your right in the car and grab the sledgehammer and pull it out. You literally need it to do any of the puzzles. Well, any of the mirror puzzles. Uh, if you want to get into them uh, through this part. So make sure that you do take this sledgehammer. A lot of people walk right by it and don't even think twice about taking it.
it's just pretty important to have. Um, you do have to use both hands to carry it. Um, you can carry it in one hand and like pills or a lighter in your other hand. You really don't need the lighter through this playthrough. Um, I only noticed that you need it maybe one or two parts throughout this whole this whole chapter, um, which isn't bad. Um, now, as far as getting to the basement, even if you did the Lucy chapter first, this is the only way that you can actually get to the basement. So behind the door to the garage, there'll be a broken mirror with a hallway. Um, this is pretty much the only way to the basement except for a couple of the mirror puzzles which will automatically put you in the basement anyway. Um, but if you're free roaming and you want to get to the basement, this is going to be the way you're going to have to take. And then there's one, there's also only one way to get back up to the top of the house, which you'll see in the basement as well. But we're going to be coming up on our first puzzle. Um, again, I, I started with the puzzles in the basement just because it, you know, one leads to the next one, giving you key items and so forth. Um, so yeah, it'll just put you in the basement. Let's go ahead and do the first puzzle, which will be in the lower area of the basement. Um, most of the lights will stay on through the gameplay anyway, but I would also suggest getting the electric key. Now, the reason I start with this one is because you have to go get her tea. So that's why I mentioned that tea box from the attic earlier. And this gives you the key to that box. Um, and this one will actually also give you the crowbar <clears throat> for the next puzzle to lead to the next puzzle and so forth. You see what I'm saying? Now, this hole right here in the bathroom up the stairs from that lower area of the basement is the only way to get back upstairs until you beat this chapter. And as you see, you just drop down to Dolores, but we're making our way back up to the attic so that we can get the tea box. Um, I know this is not like all puzzles, uh, I mean, I guess it kind of is, you know, um, but I also, besides just the main mirror puzzles, I did want to give you guys some tips and stuff like that too, from what I noticed. Um, sometimes you can get stuck there just because you didn't trigger an event, so I'm hoping to mention those as much as possible today. But that's where we get the tea. Uh, making our way back down now, we actually go in there and see that she's gone. You will need both hands so you can drop your hammer, uh, which is not a big deal. It'll go to your storage room. Uh, even if you lose it because the crowbar will need two hands as well <clears throat> so I don't want to show too much because I don't want to spoil um, but you'll pour the tea in and an event will happen uh, where you have to escape but once you come out the crowbar and the first crib piece will actually be there as well so we'll take the crowbar we're gonna go to the mirror right above the stairs of that lower area as well break in with the sledgehammer and grab the crowbar I just put next I put them both next to each other right there um, that way you can just have them. Granted, the sledgehammer will go back to the progress room. But all you have to do for this one is take the crowbar. This is the only time you use the crowbar, by the way. So you don't need it after this mirror. Um, you'll use the crowbar to actually get the compass for the next mirror puzzle that we're going to do. Really good graphics, by the way. I really love this game. Just throwing in my personal opinion there. This compass doesn't work anywhere else except for the next puzzle that we're going to do, which also takes place in the basement. It's actually up the stairs to the left here. Um, if you go past your progress room into that, yeah, into this little area, just keep going to your left until you reach these stairs. And then once you're at the top of the stairs, you'll see the next mirror. Um, I just I just took the sledgehammer with to each mirror that I went to. Um, this is the playground. This one was really confusing because I had no idea uh, what you did here. Now, just to take note, you need the compass to uh, progress this area. If you come to this area and you try to go down the street to the left here, it'll actually just put you back at the beginning of the park. So with the compass, you'll actually be able to walk down the street into this uh, cemetery area. I just kind of skipped the walking. But once you get into the cemetery area, there's going to be two paths that you could take, one to the right and one to the left. Uh, so we're going to be taking the path to the left to do this uh, puzzle first. Uh, it's just e either one you take, it's just one straight way. Um, you just go all the way up on the left path and you're eventually going to reach a little dirt circle pit. And uh, it's going to have a crib in it, as you see here. I'm going to go ahead and skip the cutscene as well. But it'll do a cutscene, open up to a box, which will actually be the next crib piece. So 
So all you have to do is just go back and instead take the right path. And on the right path, you'll just turn left and there will actually be, uh, you just go all the way to the top. There'll be a door up there. Um, if you try to go up to this door beforehand, it won't be open. So you just have to get that crib piece first and then this will be cracked and then you'll go through a little cutscene opening it up. And then after that, all you have to do is just run all the way down the stairs through the door, at which point you'll just enter into the basement again. Uh, also, real quick note, when you go to the right path, you actually turn right instead of left going up to the door. If you go to the right, there's actually a cemetery you can get up to, and it'll give you the option to press F for respects, and then the guy just screams. I just wanted to make that note, so if anybody wants to go see that, you can. I didn't film it or record it, um, but you can do that. So yeah, once again, you get put down in the basement again. Um, I think at this point, let's see. Okay, yeah. So this is back in the progress room. So if you go back upstairs and go to the progress room, we actually need to stop here. Uh, to get a sphere from this little baby. Um, this is actually very important for one of the last mirror puzzles that we do. Um, and you'll see why in a bit. But yeah, make sure you go to the progress room. You could do that at any point, by the way. You can go to the progress room, go through that mirror, and then get that sphere. Uh, this is back in the study room. I wanted to highlight this too so you knew where the electric key is. Uh, you just have to go into the study room on the left side of the desk. And that's the very top drawer. There's the electric key. The mirror in here is also very important. Uh, we're going to be coming back to this. Um, but he has the infusion bag that you're going to need for when you do the painting puzzle. Um, and then just go ahead and uh, touch his body too. It'll say a single knife seems to be removed. I do that just in case you need to press that for whatever reason. Uh, but we will be getting that knife in a little bit. Yeah. Dolores was around the corner and scared me. I didn't even know she was going to be there. <laughs> All right, so back up in the hallway, there's actually the other mirror over here behind the attic. This is the mirror puzzle where you need to take the sledgehammer into with you. I would suggest uh, don't turn around when you go in. Just go straight to the back to where this cracked wood is and just start hammering away with the hammer or the sledgehammer. Um, I've, I, I tried it once where you turn around and then keep going and you pretty much die every time. So what I figured is just run straight for it, start hammering, and you should have no problem. She shouldn't be able to kill you. Um, but she is chasing you at that point. But that's the only mirror puzzle you'll need the sledgehammer with. Um, other than that, you could break all the mirrors and just put it into the uh, storage box and then just leave it alone from there. Uh, this one I'm not going to get into too much detail, but once you get to this puzzle, there's going to be a bunch of bodies hanging around and there's going to be a poem in a chair uh basically the goal is to go upstairs and you, you this is where you get the crank by the way you're going to need the crank for another puzzle uh to get the knife um so you're going to get the crank upstairs you need to line up the light like the light on the chair you need to line up the light with other bodies that are in that area and there's a poem to give you a hint as to which ones to light up i'm just going to show you the final solution you can either pause it you know, look at it, whatever you need, as far as the puzzle goes. But yeah, this is where the crank is going to be, right over there. As soon as I get to it. And then, so just so you know, there's three rows and three of each. So you can go through and crank them all, see how it's laid out. So there's three, middle there's three, and then the back there's three. So if you come up the stairs and stand at the back where the, the side of the stairs, that is the solution right there. So you, like I said, you could just pause it and just look at it and then just line it up in your video. But just know that I'm looking at it from the perspective of the side of the stairs. Once you're done, you'll be able to come downstairs and go through a hole in the ground. Uh, I'm just going to kind of skip this too, but basically you just walk through a little cave and then you come out a couple doors and end up in the basement again. Uh, in the basement, uh, right next to the progress room, there's a closet you can go into and there's a mirror in there. Um, since we have the crank now, we'll go ahead and do this puzzle as well. Um, there is also an Easter egg in this part. Uh, if you'd like to do it, after you go through this little tunnel through this door, um, at the bottom of the stairs there's crosses like this you can grab one and take it up with you and there will be a hole upstairs that you can lay the cross on uh, you'll just go across that across the cross and uh, go into a door and there's actually an Easter egg there 
I just wanted to mention that as well because I'm not going to show it here. Um, but yeah, so you take the cross upstairs and there's a hole. As far as the puzzle, you'll just take the crank over to over here. And this is going to pull up the Jesus cross to let you get the knife uh, from the side of him on the other side. Now, going back to the garage, um, this is what we're going to use the sphere with. You can use that tool. You can interact with that tool. It'll open it. Just open up your inventory, put the sphere in, and then it'll crush it and give you a paper. Again, this paper is important for a final puzzle. Also to note, you need to get this paper to actually complete that puzzle later on. Um, it won't let you complete. Like, I completed the puzzle without the paper, um, but... It wouldn't let me do it because I didn't finish the sphere part. So make sure that you do finish this sphere part. Um, and then that way you can finish that puzzle later on. Um, heading back up to the study room. We're going to go ahead and put the knife in the guy. I'm going to go ahead and skip the scene um, where he's getting stabbed and stuff like that. I, got, I do want to save some for you guys. I'm just here to help with the puzzles and give you some tips as much as I can. Once that's done, you'll be able to get the key from his leg. And then there's a secret room in the back over here. And that this key that you get from his leg after putting the knife back in him will open this door. Uh, this is actually where you get the next crib piece. And uh, another audio cassette tape as well. Also, I, I do recommend that if you guys do play it through, uh, even with the help of the puzzle, um, watch the scenes, listen to the audio tapes. It's, it's a really good story. Uh, in the fridge is more infusion bags and that door is jammed. Now, when you do come around here, the guy is going to be awake. Um, what I personally suggest is to walk forward a little bit to get him walking. Um, move back into the room. I personally just closed the door and then just backed up and waited for the music to end. I figured that was the best way. I mean, if he came in and killed me, there was nothing I could do. Because I, I promise it's almost impossible to juke him in that room and, and get around him. So, just wait till the music ends. Once it's over and he's probably gone, uh, I mean, you can open the door, check, you know, but he should be gone by that point, and then you can leave. So heading back into the living area where we found the basement key, uh, you're going to go down here, and this is actually going to be the painting uh, puzzle. Um, that's why I said you wanted to take those pictures off the wall in that main room where the crib is, because in those peepholes is where the answer is to this puzzle. Um, so in this first area, one of the uh, sorry, pictures is going to be one of the three you need to put on the wall. I, I messed up here. I forgot to open the door first and then I couldn't drop the item. Uh, but I'm going to just go ahead and skip to the final three. If you want to pause it, you can do that as well. But those are the final three and that's the order they need to be in. It'll open this door and this is also why you need the infusion bag uh, before you come to this puzzle room as well. Otherwise, you won't be able to complete this room. So, You'll go ahead and put the infusion bag onto that stand, and it'll do a little cutscene and also give you the uh, next crib piece. Right there, in the middle, yeah. So, we'll go ahead and take that and move on to the next one. Now, this is the puzzle room that I was talking about with the piece of paper. There's four puzzles in this room. So there's one with clocks, one with a candle, one with windows, and one with pictures on the wall as well. Um, each time needs to be set accordingly. That paper does tell you all. Um, I believe the left one is 6 o'clock. The second one is 3.30. And the third one is 12.30. I'm also going to let it play out, though, so that way you guys can see it. Um, so if you don't want to listen to me, you can at least see it in the video as well so that we can have it correctly. And then on the pictures, um, basically the outside two pictures, you're going to want to point inward and then leave the middle one facing up. As far as the windows, the two on the outside are going to be opened with the middle one being left closed. 
and that will be those three puzzles. And then the last one, there's three stands for candles. All you need to do is light up the middle one. I kind of messed up a little bit here, but it also allows you guys to see it, um, it done properly as well. <clears throat> so yeah, the two on the outside do not need to be lit. No candles on them, just the middle one. And then that'll complete the puzzle in this room. Now, one thing to note, you do have to have the other four crib pieces on the crib before you finish that room. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I, I was sitting in that room forever wondering why it wasn't letting me go because I was speed, speed running the second time. Um, you do have to have the four crib pieces on there. And then if you come back to this room, it'll actually continue like it's supposed to. Basically, the door will disappear. Um, and you want to take some laps around here. What will inevitably happen is an area will open up where you're going to find a baby monitor. Well, it's going to be a bunch of them, but you're going to get a baby monitor. Um, but yeah, just take some laps around until the area opens up. Once you're in here, you'll be able to get the baby monitor. Um, one thing to note too, once you get the baby monitor, you're going to need to go back to the crib room. I don't know why it's kind of weird. Um, but if anything, just turn the baby monitor on just to make sure it's working correctly. Um, and go back to the crib room and you'll hear Dolores start saying the numbers. She'll start saying some numbers. If I remember correctly, it's five, zero, three, seven, three. So yeah, just take a quick stop back in here. Make sure she's starting to say the numbers. And then you're going to actually head into the bathroom where, uh, I think it's the last puzzle mirror. I believe this is the last one. Yeah. So with those numbers, if you've come in here before, or if maybe this is a part you're getting stuck on, you'll notice that the clocks up here didn't have hands before. And now they do as long as you have the baby monitor. So what you want to do is follow the numbers that she's feeding you with the time for the hallway. So the first one starts off as five. So you want to go down the hallway. That's at five o'clock. And then I believe the next one was zero. And so you got to think military time on this one, but it's 12 o'clock. It's 12 a.m. I should say. The next one I believe is three. So you'll just go into the one that has three o'clock. And then the next one will be seven o'clock. So you just go down that hallway. And then coming up on the final one, it'll be the last one, which is three as well. So just go up the middle one, which will bring you to a door. Um, again, I'm gonna be kind of skipping some scenes here because I don't want you guys to, I still want you guys to enjoy the game yourself. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and get in here. But basically, you're going to need to get a handle from the music player. Um, I skipped walking through. After the initial time you try to grab it, it doesn't let you. And you're going to walk in a straight path. You, you'll see what I'm saying when you play the game. But you'll walk in a straight path and finally reach the music player once again. There's nothing to show. There's nothing in your way. It's just one path. Uh, you'll grab the handle. Once you come out in the basement again, you're going to see the... I'm assuming this is like an intestine on the floor. Um, and you're going to actually follow this, I believe, all the way back to the progress room. So to get back upstairs, you have to go back to the bathroom and fall down again. Like I said, this is pretty much the only way you can get back up, even if you did the Lucy chapter. So you'll fall back down to Dolores, but you will end up leaving that same area and then following it up to the progress room. This time in the progress room with the baby, you're actually going to be able to take the baby and give her or give the baby to Dolores. I don't know what gender it is. Uh, you will need both hands for this, so just put away in your inventory whatever you have in your hands. And then you'll be able to use that to grab the baby. Sorry, you'll be able to grab the baby. All you have to do is just really simple. Follow up the path all the way back to Dolores and just give her the baby. So giving the baby back to Dolores will actually give you access to the last crib piece. Um, once she takes it, 
basically this is kind of a cutscene, but I wanted to show it to make sure you guys see where the piece is as well. Um, the Jesus piece that's next to the wall next to you um, falls off and reveals the last crib piece. So once the scene ends, go ahead and take that, and then we'll head back up to the crib to put the final piece on, which will pretty much be leading us right to the end of the game. There is one more puzzle that we're going to have to do, um, but that's it's pretty easy. So you'll put the final piece on, and this is actually going to unlock a key for you for the box that's in this room as well. If you notice, there was a music box on the floor uh, near the mirror. This is the key for that. And it's actually going to give you a record player. So we had gotten the record handle, and now we're going to get a record, or sorry, record disc or whatever um, from this music box. And we're actually going to head down to the basement after this to go ahead and play the music player to get the music going. But it is important. It contributes to the, well, I said last before, but like basically the last mirror puzzle in the basement. So back in the basement, we'll put the handle on. And we'll put the player in. And then go ahead and just turn the handle to get the music going. And then there's a mirror to the right right here where up till now hasn't been accessible, uh, the door inside of it. Um, so now with the music playing, the door will actually be opened. You won't need any key or anything like that. You can actually just go right through. Um, this part's a little bit complicated. Um, basically what's going to happen, as you can see, there's a bunch of stairs everywhere and you won't hear the audio from my side, but you'll hear it on your side. So there's two noises that you'll hear in this room. One is the classical music playing from the player. And then two is like demon noises. Now what happens in here, the secret to this puzzle is to follow the direction of the music. So if you start going the wrong way, you start hearing like the demon sounds and stuff. See how I turned back there? The music stopped and the demon sounds started playing. So that's all you really need to do to go through this room as an explanation. But I'll go ahead and stop talking and I'm going to let it play through so that you guys can see it if you just want to follow along as well. Okay, and then by the end, when you wrap up here, uh, you'll go through the door that actually works. And none of the other doors in this part will actually open, except for the correct one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip through a lot there. All it is is honestly just running a path. Once you run up that path, you'll come up to this door. Uh, I'm going to skip this again because I, I don't want you guys to be, you know, I don't want to spoil it too much. Um, but basically, you'll look through those peepholes and you'll see a couple scenes. Once those scenes end, it'll actually let you walk out that door and you will find 
the next progress item for chapter two. So um, yeah, I'm sorry, this is you know different for me. I don't typically do this kind of video. Um, I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I, like I said, I personally just didn't really see any good, you know, <clears throat> commentated uh, walkthroughs and explanations of what was going on with this chapter. I, I feel like a lot of people were lost. There was no real good guides or anything like that. Uh, I know there was a couple silent playthroughs and then some bigger YouTubers that were doing them, but they weren't explaining or really fully showing some of these puzzles or what to do. Um, like I said, this is my first time doing this kind of video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I, it took forever to edit, so give it a good like and a, a share and uh, maybe sub. You know, let me know if uh, I'm missing anything or if there's something else you want me to do. Another video like this, maybe. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. And shout out to my friend Anthony for helping me finish this up.